Hey folks, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully you're in the right place, the IIIF community and technology highlights. Um, we're gonna get started here. There's a few folks still streaming in, um, but I think Meg is gonna start us with some of the boilerplate and then we'll take it from there and I'll say a bit more about how this session will work. Great, thanks. I'll share my screen really quickly uh, with our um, boilerplate slide that many of you have likely seen if you've been attending other IIIF week events. Um, so welcome to this session. This is our um, community uh, and technical update. Um, we are back in webinar mode. The last session that we had was a meeting. Um, so in this session, again, we're just going to keep everyone muted due to the size of the audience. Um, questions for uh, Josh and Glenn can go into the um, Q&A form um, like we've done before and they'll just read them out loud to everyone on the call and then answer them. Um, if you'd like to join us on the IIIF Slack channel and uh, you're not yet a member, just send us an email at events at IIIF.io and we'll get you signed up. Um, and just to note, uh, we're recording the sessions and we'll be emailing them about a week or two after the event takes place. So if there's something that you miss or you wanna share a session uh, with a colleague who you think would be interested, um, that will all be available. Um, so with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and hand things over to Josh. Great. Okay, thank you, Meg. Um, I am then gonna share myself uh, as soon as I don't miss the button. Uh, here we go. Hopefully you can see that. Is that the right uh, view here? I'll take it on faith. Yeah, okay. Um, so let me start by saying I didn't introduce myself. Uh, my name is Josh Hadro. I'm the managing director of the IIIF Consortium. Um, and that's a set of 58 institutions that um, financially support the work um, of the community and help organize community groups that we'll talk about here today and the events that, uh, like this one, that uh, serves as a replacement for the uh, in-person Boston conference that we uh, had to postpone given uh, the pandemic um, and, uh, and everything. Um, so this session is, uh, is very much um, kind of a tradition within the IIIF community. It's a way for us to um, document and gather together kind of a distilled version of all the different activity that's happening um, kind of on the staff side. So I'll talk first about um, what we're doing, um, the three of us. So myself, Meg O'Hearn and Glenn Robeson. Um, and then we'll get into um, the specifics of each of the community groups, uh, as well as the technical specification groups. Um, and then uh, Glenn will cover some of that and he'll, uh, kind of end with some technology updates um, overall. So in a perfect world, uh, which this certainly is not, um, we would have uh, uh, some of the, the representatives from these groups um, doing these updates on their own. Uh, just for logistics sake, we're gonna go through it. So um, just bear with us uh, and we are gonna take questions. And I think many of the um, community group chairs uh, and representatives and active members of the groups are here. So um, we'll, we'll have a Q and A as best we can. Um, but uh, if we can't necessarily answer all the questions, um, we'll follow up with you. And there are lots of ways of uh, connecting with us and with the community. Um, so with that, um, let me uh, go to uh, the beginning here. So as I said, I want to touch on um, some community uh, technology milestones, um, just to highlight some of the, the recent work here. Um, and so, this is a very big one. Um, I, I almost was inclined to make this the only milestone um, to really crow about and celebrate. Um, but what this refers to, the IIIF 3.0 specifications and the voting. Um, so if you aren't aware, the IIIF uh, standards really rely on two main APIs. That's the presentation API and the uh, image API. And a lot of work in recent years has gone into a 3.0 version of that. Um, and I could not be more thrilled to tell you that um, the, our technical review committee and all the governance mechanisms um, have been completed. We voted on that um, and approved it and the community has, has completely and officially approved um, those specifications. So we'll be crowing about that and sending information about that specifically um, once it's all merged into GitHub, but I wanted to be able to tell you that uh, it's super exciting. 
Um, if we were in a room all together, uh, what I would do is ask everyone to clap. Um, I think now that would be strange because we'd alarm our cats and dogs and partners. Um, but uh, inside, I hope you're cheering as loudly as I am. This is a, like a really big moment for AAAF and um, I think it's really important um, just how much work has gone into this and how much work this now enables other institutions to do. So uh, really exciting milestone. Um, another here is um, is kind of the event we're at, the, the IIIF week. Um, I think I just want to express my gratitude, particularly to Meg and Glenn, um, the staffers who uh, in I think eight, eight weeks, nine weeks, really made this event possible. Um, so we had been going full bore on planning for our Boston conference um, until mid March when that became impossible. And then since then, we've put together this entire um, set of content. So we hope uh, you're enjoying it. If this is your first event, then uh, welcome to AAAF Week. Um, and otherwise, yeah, we, we hope this has been um, a valuable set um, of events for you. Um, I also uh, want to make sure that we highlight the fact that we um, have a, a critical new uh, member of our staff. Um, so the community events coordinator, Meg O'Hearn, who you heard just a moment ago. Um, we couldn't be more excited to have her on board. Uh, it's it's really unlocked a lot of uh, capabilities for us. And um, I'm really excited about uh, how much more work we'll be able to do to liaise with the community and um, do training and all sorts of important things. So welcome, Meg. Um, we're all waving to you uh, as if we were in the room together. Um, some, some recent projects that we've done in terms of um, uh, support and um, uh, kind of partnership in the community. One of the ones we're really proud of uh, and has had, um, I think, a really positive effect uh, is a project called Visible Wiki Women um, from an organization called Whose Knowledge. And um, this is a set of folks who um, have been deeply connected to the Wikimedia um, organization and who have started their own group um, to really highlight uh, ways that um, women and particularly underrepresented women, so black, brown, indigenous, uh, trans women can um, be better represented and particularly focused on Wikipedia articles. And so I think there's a lot of work um, that's already being done in AAAF and cultural heritage institutions uh, on the digitization and the metadata fronts to, um, to make digital versions of important documents and uh, images available. Uh, and so working with a project like Visible Wiki Women, I think, is, is just one of many ways that we, um, as a consortium and as a community, um, can bring together some of these resources um, for kind of real tactical purposes. Um, Related to that, which is another document that we created that uh, I think I'm, I'm not, I think I am pretty proud of, and I think is um, quite valuable beyond just the moment. Um, right as the stay at home orders were going into place, we put together this resources for working with IIIF materials document, and it was really geared toward educators um, and making it clear uh, or as clear as possible how people might work with IIIF materials and um, and and just kind of help them um, cross the the barriers that they suddenly found themselves dealing with in terms of working remotely and, and just with um, electronic and digital materials. A um, couple others that I'll mention and then we'll get to the uh, community updates. But um, this is an important piece of governance. Uh, governance sometimes is is a little dry and boring, but um, it's really critical, especially in the context of an open technology community like this. Uh, so we have something called a coordinating committee, um, and it's been around for a long time, uh, and it was always populated by by eager and active um, um, fellow travelers and participants in the IIIF community. And what we did in the last two months is that um, we just formalized that group um, to make it quite literally representative of the community groups and um, and some of the uh, the various um, factors that, that make up the IIIF community. Um, so we had our first revised meeting of that group um, last month to kick that off. Um, just because of the event, we haven't put up a web page um, documenting that yet, but that's really just um, a matter of time. Uh, we'll get information about that group uh, online as soon as we can. Um, and uh, we hope that that'll be another kind of transparent mechanism for just how um, we we kind of make available what IIIF uh, is talking about as a community. Um, and uh, I'll also say that uh, many of you were very helpful in responding to a survey we put out. Um, we're in the midst of doing, I think, a, a quite overdue update to the IIIF website. Um, 
so uh, it's, I think it's a, it's a badge of honor just to, to show how much this technology has grown and how many new people are, are seeking to implement it and, and how many ways in which um, those people uh, aren't necessarily software developers or, or working uh, at, at a code level or implementation level. Um, we're seeing increased uh, questions and queries from museum staff members and front of house folks, educators, high school through um, PhD programs. So uh, a lot of the work we're doing to revamp the website is about um, engaging and making IIIF information, tools, resources, all of these things as easily accessible to like just a huge audience of people um, so that uh, so that we can build a community with those folks in mind um, and really just strengthen it overall um, as, a, as a user base, um, which then obviously feeds back into uh, how strong the, um, the support is for developing the specs and the technologies and the software. So on that front, uh, I am also just extremely excited to announce, even in um, some of the, the really difficult financial times um, over the last few months, we have been able to um, add new members to the consortium, to, to, to this body that, that quite literally sustains the work that we're doing. Um, so uh, super excited to welcome Texas A&M um, as a full member of the IIIF consortium, and then um, Horizons Unlimited, DB Serrett, uh, and the, the newest member to join, the Huntington Library, Art Museum, and Botanical Gardens, um, all joining quite recently as uh, associate members. Um, so really exciting stuff there. And uh, upcoming priorities. Um, well, I guess the first one I should say is that we're going to continue doing all of the uh, important work that we have been doing. Um, we're going to carry that forward and we're going to um, put the recordings and the, um, the presentations from this week uh, online and um, continue all that stuff. But uh, some of the um, really high level stuff that we're going to look at is about um, expanded training opportunities. So that's one of the things that we've seen. Uh, we are doing a workshop next week. Um, we had 25 slots available um, to, to free it open to the community, uh, and we filled those in less than 20 hours, I think. Um, and the waiting list for that now, I think, is up over 100 people. So uh, we, we hear the demand, and um, we're going to figure out the best ways to, to kind of do recurring um, methods of, of training and uh, interaction. Um, uh, we we uh, are still... Um, eager and, and looking for uh, members to join the consortium membership to just continually strengthen that body um, and have people engage in the governance um, uh, through the technical review committee, which uh, is a right of membership um, and other ways of, of contributing um, as, as members. So um, if your institution has been thinking about it, please get in touch. Now is a great time. Um, and then beyond that, uh, we're going to be uh, undertaking what I'm calling kind of a review and refresh of the community and technology groups, which is just, I think, a healthy opportunity for each of the groups to look at the charters of their groups, look at the the way the the frequency of meetings works, the the um, the uh, the way it's being co-chaired, whether it's people want to rotate on or off, um, and so now might be a great time to get involved with some of these communities if um, if these are of interest. Um, and the last thing I'll say on this front is that. Um, I th it seems really unlikely that we'll be able to host an in-person meeting as we normally would for our fall working meeting. Um, so I think this is, in some ways, this event is a dry run for how we can um, do some of the community work that we would normally do there. So um, we're thinking about the, the truly global ways and um, accessible ways that we can uh, make that working meeting work. Um, online. And so if you are interested and have ideas on that front, um, by all means, pass those along uh, and get in touch. So um, I am uh, going to turn next to some of the community group updates. Um, I did mention that, uh, the, uh, that we'll be doing a Q&A. Um, uh, let me make sure I uh, haven't missed anything. Uh, there we go. Um, so please do put those questions in and, and we'll try and answer as best we can. And if we can't, we will find you the person who can to get you the right answer. Okay. And these are in alphabetical order. I should note that. No particular order here other than that. Um, the 3D community group is uh, quite vibrant and active. Um, 
they just had a, a really great um, AAAF week showcase session um, prior to this, and that recording will be online quite soon. Um, they meet monthly, and they um, have been really diligent about featuring all the, the active and engaging projects that are happening um, in the cultural heritage and allied spaces. So you can see some lists there. Um, and their aims uh, are kind of the core aims of any community group to um, really be the, the point of contact and the point of conversation for um, the, the work of 3D in cultural heritage and the, the intersection of that technology, the, the, the developing technology space uh, and the ways that um, AAAF uh, methods and specifications work. Um, so they're very much um, in the weeds uh, or kind of doing the work of looking at all the different file formats uh, and, and reference mechanisms um, and doing the work to try and marshal some um, some agreement about how this works uh, to, to point toward maybe some future technical work. Um, and so uh, I think that speaks to um, some of the challenges as well as um, uh, intersecting with how digital preservation of those objects works. Um, um, just documenting the workflows um, you can see listed there. Um, and then uh, figuring out how to expand this work to a broader set of institutions. So uh, just a really vibrant community. Um, and uh, and we hope you'll join them if, if you or colleagues um, are doing this work um, within your own institutions. Uh, I'll turn now to the archives community group. Um, a relative newcomer, I think, um, in terms of the um, length of tenure as a community group, um, this is really about a domain specific um, uh, connection um, with archivists. Uh, and so you can see um, the goals of the archives community group here um, is really about, uh, in large ways, about uh, speaking to archivists and and folks working with uh, particularly archival materials uh, and bridging some of the gap of uh, vocabulary and translation um, to the way that um, AAAF mechanisms work and talking about how um, even some of the um, some of the specifics of um, ordering materials and presenting them through something like the the presentation API might work um, in an archival context. Uh, and then of course doing the work to highlight those things, those use cases, and then disseminating the work of the group. Um, so uh, that's really the work they've been doing through the bi-monthly calls. Um, they're on the AAAF calendar, so they uh, happen every other month if you're interested to join the next ones, and they're um, usually publicized well in, in, well in advance. Um, they've held sessions at, at our in-person events, um, all the recent ones, uh, and they're also doing work to um, develop conference proposals to uh, archival um, events in the U.S. and abroad. Um, and so uh, the last thing I'll say here, too, I think, is that um, there's some interest there in uh, cookbook recipe work, um, finding ways to uh, express best practices um, in the AAAF context applied to archival materials. Uh, and there's a link there and you can see um, uh, the connection to uh, the, the recipes that have been labeled as archives there. So discovery for humans. Um, sometimes you'll see this written as D4H. Um, this group, uh, I'll say, is, uh, is, is one of two new, newest uh, members of the AAAF community group. Uh, and it's really, importantly, a counterpart to the AAAF uh, Discovery Technical Specification Group that Glenn will talk about um, in just a moment here. Um, and where that group is really focused on a set of um, specifications to describe the work and uh, APIs, the work of the, the Discovery for Humans group is to, to understand and arrive at some, um, some principles um, for how humans uh, will actually interact with AAAF items across institutional boundaries. Um, so it's really uh, engaged at this point in um, generating recommendations uh, for discovery mechanisms, as well as doing and gathering just some of the, the basic UX research about how people uh, approach um, objects and research using digital materials. Um, so uh, that that continuing that work is the plans for the next year is um, assembling that usability research, um, analyzing the way that um, existing AAAF interfaces and discovery systems work, 
Um, and I think trying to marshal that effort and, uh, and unify it so that it can be as, um, as efficiently uh, deployed as possible. Manuscripts. Um, the Manuscripts uh, is another long-standing uh, community group. Um, and really, um, uh, some of the, the, the most uh, eager and uh, ambitious use of the IIIF um, annotations I've seen have come out of some of the um, manuscripts communities and, and some of the, the Twitter conversations are just um, really wonderful as a, as a bystander. Um, I don't understand a lot of the manuscript research, but I, I love to see it. Um, so uh, they, this group has a meeting just following um, the meeting uh, that we're in now. So the next hour will be a manuscripts um, group showcase. So if you're interested, please join us um, following this. Um, and so you see here some of the, the guiding themes for the manuscript community group um, is uh, to highlight and uh, maintain interest um, among institutions uh, about the way that they can use digitized manuscripts uh, and IIIF capable materials um, and providing feedback uh, to the IIIF community uh, on how some of these aggregation um, and repository efforts uh, are working and uh, are making the materials available to scholars in particular. Um, and just to uh, connect to some of the one of the larger goals of the IIIF community, which is just to advance scholarship and, and do that um, premised on open and interoperable um, mechanisms. Um, so a lot of important work happening there. There's a link to the um, group page just below. Um, and so their activities are really focused uh, around their uh, quarterly calls, which um, uh, do the work of disseminating um, that information, highlighting demonstrations and doing the outreach to the scholarly um, community. Um, so some of the near-term goals that they've articulated are about um, kind of maintaining that engagement and reinvigorating um, the community. And you see a connection here to the Discovery for Humans group, which uh, I think has uh, a lot of connections to all the community groups, but um, uh, helping the Discovery for Humans group really understand this particular set of use cases. So the way that these uh, particular scholars are um, engaging with manuscript materials through IIIF interfaces. Um, so you can see there the call to join the quarterly, um, quarterly manuscript calls that happen, um, uh, as well as the, the mailing list to, to keep informed about um, other activities on that front. And with the, um, Discovery for Humans community group, the MAPS community group is, uh, is tied for our newest um, set of, uh, of folks uh, gathering uh, community interest and, uh, and hosting calls um, throughout uh, the weeks and months. So um, the, the MAPS community group uh, has been brewing for a while since I would say late last year um, and really came together. Uh, there was a formalized charter at the very beginning of 2020 uh, and then a lot of really important work happened at an event happen, uh, held at Stanford University in, um, I believe, the first week of February of uh, 2005. Uh, sorry, um, first week of February 2020. Um, and that, that was related to Geo for Lib Camp, um, which is uh, kind of a map domain um, event that happens. Um, uh, and so they, they tacked on uh, a day or two to talk about particularly the interest in IIIF and MAPS. Uh, and uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Um, maybe, maybe Glenn can share it in the chat, but I think we came up with um, dozens of, uh, of use cases uh, documenting um, desired interactions and possible interactions um, uh, between IIIF specifications or IIIF materials um, that are um, that have geospatial aspects to them. So basic stuff like annotating a map to, uh, to indicate what, uh, what a point or a region might be, um, all the way to more complex things like um, the desire to uh, georectify a map, um, meaning adding control points and connecting a historical map to a, a current map interface, um, to seeing if that is possible, um, possible to express in, uh, in something like the um, IIIF presentation. Um, uh, specification. So that event and then subsequent calls for the MAP group have been really valuable in refining and gathering those use cases. Um, and uh, some of that work has then led immediately to creating cookbook recipes for the stuff that um, 
for the tasks and use cases that are achievable currently without any um, uh, any change uh, or update to the um, specifications. And of course, uh, highlighting some of the, the related work and projects and some of the exciting stuff that um, is related to maps uh, and the digital versions of those. Um, and so it's also, uh, I think, exciting to um, say that they're in the process of forming um, a, a companion group, a technical specification group um, to uh, help um, examine and hopefully um, potentially write something like a, an extension or, or whatever it may um, become um, to do the, the work that might uh, then enable even further um, important work of connecting maps and geospatial assets uh, to, to IIIF materials and doing it in a way that, um, that follows the same rules and guidelines as um, IIIF uh, specifications do. Let's see, in the museum's uh, community group, oop, I skipped one here. Um, so this group had a, um, uh, an exciting uh, community showcase call just a few days ago. Um, the recording of that will be made available. Um, and as with many of these domain specific groups um, is really geared toward uh, presenting um, information of interest to museum professionals uh, around the world. Um, they have monthly calls on the first Tuesday of each month. Um, so you can see some of the highlights. I believe uh, folks from all of these have spoken on recent calls. Um, the George O'Keefe Museum, the Royal Collection Trust, the Terra Foundation, um, the Smithsonian Open Access Initiative. Um, the new associate member, uh, Huntington Library, Art Museum and Botanical Gardens, um, demonstrating some of the work that they've been doing, um, particularly on the uh, work with educators. Um, that was a fascinating call. Um, and some of the work from the Royal Pavilion and Museums in Brighton, um, working not just with 2D objects, but also um, using the universal viewer and, and exploiting uh, the current capabilities of that viewer to, um, uh, to work with 3D objects. Um, uh, in the context uh, or uh, aligned with um, IIIF 2D objects. So um, some of the work that the museums group is, um, is uh, undertaking now is um, talking to dams vendors. So that's one of the main and best ways of, for the museum group to, um, to help spread the, the work and, um, and to, to enable institutions to work on this is to help them, um, their digital asset management systems um, work with uh, IIIF. Uh, so there was a really successful call to vendors uh, in the past and they're continuing that work um, and, and trying to push um, for more integration there. Um, so sp some specific technical requests that you see listed here um, and, and as well as showcasing the, the, the vendors that have integrated um, IIIF capabilities like NetX resource base and gallery systems. The newspaper community group, um, another uh, content related uh, community group here, um, really focused on featuring um, implementations of newspaper materials uh, expressed in IIIF contexts. Um, uh, recent ones include Europeana, um, the Sam Vera project um, from Boston Public Library and the University of Utah, um, Viridian, um, which has a software implementation um, uh, that, that covers newspaper materials. Uh, and excitingly, the, um, one of the first cookbook recipes that is um, officially blessed uh, and will be going live soon, um, or maybe already is live, um, is uh, a newspaper recipe just to, to, to document the best practice of presenting newspapers in Chipotle. Uh, and so the future activities are um, doing some more mapping and uh, just documenting the connections and, and ways of best expressing um, complex newspaper materials uh, in the, the IIIF specifications, uh, the presentation API, um, and creating uh, FAQs um, and lists of uh, examples that might be useful to folks um, working with newspapers around the world. And I think the, the last group that uh, I will mention, and then I'll hand this over to Glenn in just a moment here, um, is the outreach community group, which is a little different than a domain or topical community group, um, really is a, a critical partner to us as IIIFC staff um, in helping do things like this event um, and, and just think through the best ways and the best use of our efforts in connecting with a broader community. So, um, 
really great work that they've helped us uh, do and done on their own is reviewing um, the AAAF Awesome List, uh, which is a tremendous resource and continues to be um, really valuable. Um, uh, the the critical work of the AAAF newsletter, so working with Meg on um, uh, just gathering all the mentions and awesome projects that are um, debuted each quarter. Um, shaping the AAAF Ambassador Program is uh, is kind of a great uh, recent work they've undertaken. So this was meant to help folks going to conferences, which sadly um, is no longer as primary uh, mechanism for us as it was. Um, but um, we're just doing some work to make some basic materials, like basic slide decks uh, and outreach materials available to um, anyone. Uh, but if you find yourself talking about AAAF all the time, um, get in touch with us. And uh, the bar is um, relatively low for being a AAAF ambassador. We just want to help you um, be the, the best representative as you can be. And, and we just like to hear about uh, how um, you're engaging with uh, different communities. Um, so you can see uh, they uh, meet monthly on the last Tuesday of each month uh, and kind of are working through um, all these different efforts. Um, and I just want to also say and thank them in advance. Um, the outreach group is um, is going to help us do is chairing the roadmap session, which is in, in many ways kind of the companion session to this update session. So tomorrow uh, we'll be doing a roadmap session to talk about kind of future work for the community overall, future directions that the staff can help with um, and the outreach chairs um, are gonna facilitate that. And I'm really grateful for their efforts um, in, in doing all the prep to make that work. So I'm gonna pause there. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and Glenn, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Hey, thanks, Josh. Start presenting. So you should be able to see my slide, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to talk about the technical specification group. Uh, these are slightly different to the community groups in that they can create new specifications and extensions and propose changes to existing specifications. The first one I'm going to talk about is the AAAF AV technical specification group. Um, this is the oldest TSG. Uh, and formed over the four years ago. It's been the main driver in producing use cases, prototypes, and the final specification to support audio and video resources in AAAF. Uh, with the imminent release of version three, uh, it can be transformed to a community group and concentrate on sharing experiences, implementing audiovisual in AAAF. And this will be through recipe creation and also demonstrations of the latest developments from the community. The second uh, technical specification is discovery. The Discovery Technical Specification Group has made great progress this year and released uh, a number of draft specifications. The Change Discovery API, which focuses on providing a mechanism for aggregating AAAF resources, is nearing its first 1.0 release. We have also seen a number of implementations of early versions of this, including from OCLC with ContentDM and Intrada with Gooby. The Content State Specification is designed so that the view of the AAAF resource can be passed between viewers. And this is another specification that's been released as 0.2. This is a more formal way of specifying the AAAF drag and drop icon functionality and also adds other ways of starting a viewer in a certain state. One thing it specifies is a AAAF content URL parameter to preload a viewer with a particular manifest. And this has seen good uptake in, for example, the Getty Animal Crossing plugin that we saw in the museum's call a couple of days ago. And also it's supported in Mirador 3. Finally, work has begun to aggregate change discovery endpoints in the form of a registry of activity streams. This should provide an automated method for getting access to a large amount of AAAF resources. The next steps for the discovery group, um, they're to discuss the final issues with the change discovery API before it can be moved to version 1.0. Uh, to move forward on the content state API by encouraging major AAAF viewers to support it and to engage early with adopters outside the uh, discovery group to see if there's any issues with the specification we need to look at. And as already mentioned, building and promoting a AAAF registry for activity streams. And I'm going to go on now to talk about some of the technical infrastructure updates uh, and other updates that I've been involved with. Um, the main priority this year has been to encourage the support of uh, 3.0 of AAAF uh, by tools and by institutions. 
Both the presentation and the image validators have been updated to support version three. The image validator has been pretty stable since its release. Uh, the presentation validator requires more examples. So if you do come across a manifest that you should think should validate, um, please do submit an issue on the GitHub repository so we can update the validator. The next mode of focus um, has been on cookbook recipes and I'll discuss this further in the next slide. And finally, the technical review committee. This was established last year to provide more support for the editors and to formalize the approval process. There've been seven meetings this year and the final one a couple of weeks ago was to approve a version, the final version of 3.0. Uh, the TCTRC is made up of consortium members and elected community representatives. AAAF cookbooks are guides to implement AAAF features. They're intended for beginners looking at how to start with AAAF and also for tool developers to see if their tools support the particular feature. There's been great progress with the cookbooks over the last few months. There are nine recipes partway through the process which will hopefully make it live in the next month or two. Uh, these cookbooks include ways to highlight write statements, display links in other HTML data, uh, display links in other HTML data and metadata, and support different view viewing directions like top to bottom and right to left viewing. There's also an example showing how to model a book in AAAF, and AV related features like poster images, accompanying canvases, and start, which is to start a presentation at a particular point in the recording and also content specific uh, recipes with ways to model operas and also uh, from the MAPS group in MAPS geotagging annotations. I'd like to say a really big thank you to the people on this slide. Uh, all have volunteered their time to write and review recipes and this has been a real community effort. Uh, if you'd like to get involved, please join the cookbook Slack channel. Uh, we meet every week and support each other to write recipes and it's a great way to learn the changes that have come with 3.0 and we're always looking for volunteer. I'd really like to just echo and say a really big thank you to the people in this slide, which put an enormous amount of effort in. Josh mentioned this, but as, as part of the AAAF week event, there is an online workshop next week, which is limited to 30 people. Uh, in the past, these types of workshops have been done in person, but this is the first time it's been done online. As Josh mentioned, it's proved very popular and there are, the plan is that there'll be presentations in every day next week covering topics like the image API, the presentation API, and also annotations, and another one, how to use AAAF in research. We also have three guest presentations during the week on crowdsourcing uh, with From the Page, the Stories Guided Viewing Application, and a talk on use of the AAAF with AI. The participants of the workshop are expected to work on a AAAF project during the week with support from the tutors, and will demo it in a meeting on Friday. All of the tasks and presentations will be recorded and open, and it's likely that we'll repeat this uh, workshop many times in the future. So if you are interested in attending a future workshop, keep an eye on AAAF Discuss where we'll do the announcement. And then looking for plans for the next year. Uh, firstly, there's, there's definitely going to be more AAAF workshops. I'm sure they'll be online uh, given what's going on at the moment. Uh, if you're interested in helping out in future events uh, as a tutor or, or as a guest uh, lecturer, please, please get in contact. Um, there's also some need to spend some time uh, ensuring the validators and cookbooks remain available, uh, particularly with the increased use they're getting uh, through cookbook processing, uh, which is a positive thing. I mentioned previously, but as part of the AAAF discovery group, there are plans in place to host a AAAF registry of activity streams. And one thing that the community has raised um, quite a lot is the need to access historical messages on Slack. Uh, and that's something that we're going to look at uh, this year about how we can make the archive of Slack available. Um, there was actually, I've, I've cheated here, there was a question on the Q&A about the um, a service to update Prezi 2 to Prezi 3. Um, there is already a service, but this needs to be upgraded now that we've released version 3 to make sure it's uh, completely up to date. Um, so that's another task for next year. And finally, um, Josh mentioned uh, we're doing a website revamp at the moment and there'll be work involved in doing that. And just I'd like to finish on, is there anything else? Um, I wonder if you can use the Q&A uh, as part of the webinar to suggest um, other topics that would be helpful uh, for us to look at um, as part of the, the consortium support for the um, for, for IIIF in the future. So I think we're going to questions now.
So uh, yeah, why don't we um, take some questions? I think you touched on it, but I guess there's a question uh, about Brian uh, Haberberger is asking um, about Prezi 3. Can you just say more about like what, what in the future will be possible about, it, will it be an endpoint or a tool that people run um, and where they can look for that? Sure, so um, it's a service which takes a version two manifest um, and it will spit out a version three manifest. Um, it, the source code is available on GitHub, which I can put the, um, uh, the link to it in the, uh, in the chat. Um, but as I say, it does need to be upgraded to the latest version of IIIF. Um, but it's mainly there as a demonstration tool um, to be able to show how to do the conversion from two to three. Um, in Brian's question, he asked if it's possible to run it against a kind of collection of two, uh, version two manifests. Um, and I think if you install it locally, uh, it should be possible to do that. Uh, the host version is, is mainly as a demonstration tool, um, but the source code is available and I'll put that in the Q&A. That's great, thanks, Brian. Um, uh, there's another question that uh, asks, will the online workshop be recorded? Um, I missed the registration. So I think the, the larger answer here is, um, I, I don't know how much you're recording of next week, but I guess the maybe the larger answer is that um, we're gonna find lots of opportunities. We, we hear the need loud and clear. Um, so uh, whether it's the recordings of the workshop next week or just an ability to, to have a really clear way for folks to um, get some of the similar uh, workshop um, experience, um, we're gonna figure that out. Uh, and, and we just wanna do it the right way. We wanna figure out, like we didn't want to just expand the number to a hundred because I don't think, I think the experience would have degraded. Um, and I say we, I think Glenn's really running point on that. So I, I think <laughs> we didn't want to burden Glenn with a hundred um, workshop attendees. So we're limiting it, um, but we're going to find the right way to do it. Sorry, and the intention is to record it at this moment in time and we'll see how that goes. It may be possible to follow the workshop uh, on your own um, but we're in the process of developing it, so it's a bit early to tell at the moment. Um, are there plans for more work on the search API? Um, so that's a big question. Do you wanna give the preview, Glenn? Sure, so this is a topic um, for the uh, road mapping session tomorrow, uh, the uh, technical road mapping session, uh, and search and auth is, is one of the major things to discuss tomorrow, so I don't wanna Pre have the conversation, but it's likely that it will be coming up in the near future. That's great. Are there other questions, or what other questions can we answer for folks? Here's one. What's the current state of AV with IIIF? Is there something people can play around with? Uh, or do or do the specs need to be figured out first? Do you want to do the honors? Sure. So yes, um, there are a number of viewers that support uh, version three. Um, for AV, um, the universal viewer is a good option to try things out with. Um, I will put a link into the um, the IIIF cookbook, and you can see some AV examples in there and try them out uh, in the universal viewer. Um, University of Indiana has also done a lot of work with um, AAA FAV and we can share some links uh, with that. Um, but even though the, the specification has been released um, today, uh, there's been an awful lot of work on implementation leading up to this point. Um, so you should be able to start with um, a lot of the AV work uh, straight away. Uh, maybe as folks are thinking of any last questions they have for us, I'll just say um, again, Glenn mentioned it, but we have actually two um, two road mapping sessions that are kind of the the next logical step out of this update session. So tomorrow um, we have a community roadmap session that's going to be led uh, by the outreach group co-chairs, um, and then uh, just following that, uh, oh, I hope I haven't missed the order, um, but. Uh, in addition to the um, community um, roadmap session, we'll also be doing a technical roadmap session. Uh, and so Glenn and the editors of the IIIF specifications um, will talk about kind of where they think the, 
um, the, the, the hardest challenges are right now and um, what possible paths forward are. And then um, that'll be an opportunity to um, discuss kind of what should be the nearest term priorities. Maybe we'll, uh, if we say last call, maybe that'll shake the tree and uh, see if folks have more questions that we can answer. I think that's a lovely note to end on. Um, so Julian asks um, uh, if, if we can all clap uh, and I'm gonna, uh, take his executive privilege um, to assume that he means for 3.0, but also for all the all the milestones and achievements. And it's not, um, we're the ones up here talking about this, but it's this is really a reflection of the work that you all um, have done. Uh, whether this is your first session, your interest kind of drives the work that we're doing um, all the way up through um, the, the co-chairs and the community group leaders who are the ones doing so much of the work. There are three of us um, who are just trying to help speed things along and, and make it work, but uh, the work is really done by the community. And so um, we should clap for that, um, uh, you know, sitting by ourselves in rooms, uh, talking to computers. Um, but really it, it is a, a wonderful effort. Um, we're so grateful um, and we can't thank you enough. Yeah, <laughs> I'll clap so you don't have to. Um, well then let's take our clapping off the air. Um, we'll end the session here. We'll urge you to join us for the road mapping sessions tomorrow. Um, and thank you for your interest. Please uh, get in touch with any of those community groups and uh, see what 2020 brings us and beyond. Thanks everyone. Take care. Thanks. Sir.